Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to Ask Me Monday. I'm Vicki Hell, and I'm so happy to be here starting out our week creatively together. I am here three Mondays a month thanks uh, to the support of Knitter's Pride or Knit Pro, depending on where you are. Um, please check them out. They have great needles, hooks, tools for knitters and crocheters. All right. If you are watching this as a replay, either later on Facebook or on YouTube, and you're only here for the tutorial, you can just fast forward until you only see my hands and you will get through all the jibber jabber. But for the rest of us, for my community um, who enjoys a little chat, let's touch base. Um, Chris, she's leading the way per usual, is watching from Sacramento. I am here at the Yarnier Studios in Austin, Texas. I would love to know where it is that you're watching from and then also what are you making right now? Um, please, I want to know. I need all the inspiration I can get these days. So what I worked on over the weekend, um, I should have brought with me. I left it at home. But if you go to my Instagram feed, which is just, oh gosh, well, maybe it's still there in the stories as they disappear. Um, it's just at Vicki Howell. Um, and it's public, so if you don't already have an account, don't worry about it, you can see it. Is I'm working on a Hello Bargello. My friend Brett Barra, Brett Barra owns this great company, Hello Bargello. She's single-handedly bringing back you know, the old craft of Bargello, but putting a modern spin on it. And I'm making a tissue box cover for the studios because right now my tissue box is naked and that is frankly unacceptable. So I worked on that a lot, uh, watched some documentaries and movies and just kind of hung out. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. So if you have a project and it can be a recipe, it can be, you know, like a great class that you took, like right now, online classes are even more important than they were before. So, you know, if you've gone and like suddenly taken a doodling class or you learned a new skill, please post, come back and post a link in the comment section so we can all inspire each other. So hello, Penny. Hello, Alexis. Hello, Caddy. Um, Caddy's working on the Vivid Valentine shawl. That's amazing. Um, if you're interested, you can get that pattern on uh, Ravelry or Yarnier.com. Hi, Elaine in Midland, Texas, just a few hours away. Um, and we've got Brenda from Mississippi, Janine in Pittsburgh. Um, all right, so great to see you, Mona, Libby. All right, okay, so today is kind of a one-two punch. I'm going to be showing you how to make a cord, but then I have a project for you to make with it if you'd like. But if you're not that into it, you can just use this cord for anything. So what I'm talking about is it's called Romanian cord. Let me see if I can get it. The white might be hard. So I was looking for something that looked like macrame, but was it macrame? Not that there's anything wrong with macrame. I love that too, but I wanted to be able to um, either knit or crochet it. And I, I looked at different ways to do knit eye cord to see if I could get the look, and it just wasn't giving me the look that um, I wanted. But then I came across the technique of Romanian cord. And that is what gives you these really cool, you can see it better with this one, really cool kind of knotted effect, but it's just crocheted. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And these cords are great for anything from, uh, you know, drawstrings to purse handles, um, you know, to bracelets or whatever, or, and under the category of things I never thought I would be coming up for a solution for, a, something to hold your face mask when you're in your car or running inside your own home or something and you're going to take it off so that you don't have to just stuff it in your pocket or the bottom of your purse or whatever that you can wear it around your neck now these are for the face masks that have the ear elastics if you've already if you've got the kind with the neck elastics you're golden this was just a solution that i needed for my own personal um utility so i'm going to show you how to make a uh, face mask cord neck holder um so we're going to be going over all of that and then i have written and photo instructions at vickihowell.com i will also be linking to um, some of the supplies so let's talk about what you'll need first all right, so to make the face mask uh, cord, try that again, <laughs> face mask neck cord, you will need DK weight yarn. It doesn't have to be exact. If you have, this is probably a little lighter. Um, this is closer to DK. The real important part is that it is a yarn with a ply. You want it to 
for two reasons. One, you're going to be um, working it a little bit with a hook, so it needs to be able to handle that wear. Two, it just needs to be durable in general, and yarns with plies tend to be more that way. And three, um, if it's plain like this, it'll really pop the um, look of the stitch in general. So it doesn't really matter. I like, you know, any of the plant fibers, like this is a, this is just a straight up cotton. Um, and then what I'm gonna be showing on today is actually a hand dyed wool, but it does have that twist, real tight twisted uh, ply. So you need that. Then you need the appropriate size crochet hook. For me, I'm using a DK weight and a size G. Uh, and you can kind of mess around with it. If it gets too tight with a G, you could go up to an H, or if you're using a different weight yarn, your cord will just be a little thicker or a little lighter, not a big deal. But what I do highly recommend are these Knitter's Pride Ginger Hooks for this particular technique. And here is why, I will show you closer in a second, but the pointy heads of these really make this technique a lot easier. And you can find these um, really at your local yarn store, um, I've linked to a place that sells them. I don't actually have them here at the Yarn News Studios right now, um, but I highly recommend them. So these are the Knitter's Pride Ginger Hooks, but just look for this on your hook, a real pointed hook. All right, then, so that's what you need just for the cord. If you're gonna use this cord for something else, then you're good, that's all you need. But if you are making the face mask cord, think of this project as like an eyeglass chain. You know, it's just to sort of like keep your protective gear as close as possible. So, yeah, I'll just pick it up. You're gonna need a sharp tapestry needle, large eye, just large enough that your yarn will fit through it. And then you are going to need two lanyard clips. You can find these online at your local craft store. They're just, you know, like when you make those lanyards with lacing at kids camp or whatever, you just need a couple of those. And then a couple of O-rings. Um, it just needs to be big enough that your cord will slide through it. So it doesn't have to be exact. So you'll need two of those. These can all be found at any craft store or online. All right, I think that's all we need. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start, well, I'm gonna flip over. I'm going to show you how to do first the Romanian cord and then how to turn it into the face mask neck holder. All right, this is not holding your neck. It's a face, back, face mask holder. Just wanted to clarify. Okay, I'm gonna flip it around. I just realized that I can't flip it around. I have to do it a different way because my Yarnier for the next month for July products are over there and I can't reveal that. So you're gonna just have to see my ceiling for a second, which, which I do not enjoy. <laughs> oh, live. Live videos, they're the best. Okay, so let's get all set up here. Rearrange the stuff. All right, so I have my hook and I have my yarn. And again, all of this is written out at vickihowell.com. All right, so first we're gonna start by setting up. And we are going to, for the face mask, neck cord in particular, we want to leave about six inches, give or take, of tail. If you're using it for something else, just leave a, you know, whatever tail that you want. And then you're going to make a slip knot. And then you're going to chain three. And I've linked to a video on chaining, just in case you need a slower, if you're new to the craft and you need a slower video, um, I've got one on YouTube. Okay, so we're chaining three. Again, this is just the setup. Now we are going to insert our hook into the second and the third chain. So there's the second, there's the third. We are going to yarn over and pull through. So you'll have three loops on the hook right now. Then you are gonna yarn over and pull through just the first two. Let's see if I can do this without everything sliding off. Okay, yay, winning. And then you're gonna yarn over and pull through the last two. So essentially a single crochet with just a little added stitch involved. Okay, so that setup step, that's the first setup step. Then you're going to rotate the piece clockwise 
And you'll notice, you see the top of the stitch, which looks a lot like a, a knit stitch, really. And then to the left, you're gonna see a wee baby necktie. Like it'll look like a little one strand scarf. It's this scarf or this bar that you want. And this is why I like this pointy hook. You need to go through this. Oh, I miss my dragon nails. Anybody feel me on missing the manicures? <laughs> okay, <laughs> through this, that, and you will now have two loops on the hook. You wanna yarn over, pull through that first one. You'll have two loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through two. All right, you are now done with your setup. So you've done that. From here on, and on vickihell.com, I have an asterisk to show you where you'll start. This is what the process for the rest of this cord will look like. So again, we are going to rotate our piece counterclockwise. Now the only difference this time and from now on is that instead of one little neckerchief, you're gonna see it looks like a little wrapped around scarf. In other words, it's going to be two little bars. So again, this is why I like this pointy ginger hook. You need to insert your hook through both both of those little scarfs that that wrap so there's now you're going to have three chains or excuse me three loops on your hook just as a side note pro tip i like to kind of then slide it down to the wider part of the hook you know there's like the shank that's smaller the head and then sort of the body of the hook only because it makes the step that i just showed you the next time around easier because it makes sure that it's loosened up a little but i digress okay so we've got three loops on the hook we wanna yarn over, we're going to pull through just those first two. You'll have two. You're gonna yarn over and pull through those last two. And that is how you do the stitch pattern. All right, so let's do it again. We rotate our piece, counter, or excuse me, clockwise. We insert it th through the two bars. And again, I have a close-up picture of this at vickihowell.com. Yarn over. And at first you might have to do a little wiggle waggling, a little negotiating. Pull through those two loops, yarn over, pull through two. Now can you see how it's creating this really cool cord? All right, I'm gonna show it to you just a couple more times because for me it took my, my brain a little while to process this. So rotate it clockwise, insert our hook through the little wraparound scarf loops, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that is all there is to it. You just continue that until you get a piece that is 26 inches. I've written it out in centimeters too, but I don't remember what that is. I try to always do that, folks, so I apologize if you're not in the States and I don't have that memorized. Uh, oh, I've also written out, I also have linked to UK to, to um, US to UK terms as well at vickihell.com. All right, so 26 inches or about two inches shorter than you want your entire piece. So it really will just depend on how long you want your cord to hang around your neck. All right, so then you want to fasten off and you'll, on the opposite end, you'll leave a, a long tail as well. All right, from here, if you are using this to make a cord, we're going to work on this step next. Okay, so we need our tapestry needle, our lanyard clip, and our O-ring. All right. First, we are going to just slide on our lanyard clip onto our O-ring. These are sometimes called jump rings instead if you're doing a search for these after. Then you're going to just slide it on over. Oh, hi, Leslie, it's nice to see you here. These are for our mask. Leslie Bennell here in, um, in Austin, amazing sewing instructor. She has a whole mask initiative going. So what we're gonna do, if you're just joining us, we are making face mask cords to help just to kind of like eyeglass cords or chains for your neck to keep your mass around. All right, so now we're going to pull it about an inch, inch and a half to create 
the loop that holds on to the clasp. You want to slip on the tail. Michaela says she uses this stitch for straps. It would be great for straps with a thicker cotton and a worsted weight or even doubling that would be fantastic for bags. All right, so don't worry about, I've already done the other side. Don't worry about measuring exactly. I just like to make sure that the loops are around the same size. Does that really matter either? Not really, but it would bug me. Okay, so then you're going to poke through. That's the only reason you need a sharp one, but honestly, it's just yarn. It would probably be fine if you only had a regular yarn needle. And you're just gonna take a couple, whoops, a couple of tack stitches. So that's just coming up and then going down. All right, so now that's secure, now we wanna make it a little bit kind of cooler looking. And we're just going to wrap around. So we're just doing straight up yarn wrapping like you would do if you were working on friendship bracelets or macrame. And you want to tug it, make it as clean as you can, but you know, don't stress. And then once you've done that a few times, I'd flip it over to the wrong side. Actually, I'm already on the wrong side. And when I say wrong side, it's the side where I fold it over and it's got, you can see the second piece. Does it matter? Again, not really. And then you want to sort of just create a little knot. And hopefully your yarn stays in your needle. Okay, so we're going to create a little knot feed this through and then I will just snip and that's all there is to it. Then you have your mask. This part is probably self-explanatory but since we're all here hanging out all you have to do is clip this on which would have been a lot easy, would be a lot easier if I weren't straddling a camera right now. <laughs> oh, for the love of Pete, there we go. On both sides. And I just made this one this morning. I've had this vintage fabric for 15 years. I've made so many things with it. In fact, I just came across a magazine project from a magazine from like 10, 12 years ago that had pillows with this. And I love it so much. It's vintage bar cloth, but I digress. Then you just put it on and you can throw it around your neck for whenever you are out um, and about. And that, my friends, is all you have to do. All right, I got to do this weird thing again where I'm going to flip you around. Oh, one of these days, one of these days, we'll get to it. All right, and that's really all there is to it. It is hot in here. Look at that with my hair sticking to my forehead, professional style. Man, it is going to be a long summer. <laughs> All right. So again, for, for uh, the pattern and the instructions and photo tutorial, just go to vickihowell.com. If you think that there's anybody in your circle who would be into making this or just learning the technique for a Romanian cord, please just send them to vickihell.com, but also share this video. It really helps when we share um, videos. So, oh, I guess I could put it on too. So you can just see like, let me see if I can show you a little better. Mm, not really, it would be better if I had the camera facing the other way, but then it would make you all have to go like this. So you just throw it around your neck and that is that. And then, case of the Mondays. Um, and then you have it with you at all times. So that's all there is to it. All right. Couple of, couple of last things while you're staring at my close up to my face. We are off on next week because I'm packing up. We'll be packing up and shipping. Um, We'll be packing up and shipping July's Yarnier. Please come back here at um, 
the same time, so 12 o'clock central, this Friday the 3rd for the unboxing, the big reveal for July. We've got some fun stuff. Oh, and then we have in the shop right now, we have kits for the scarf I'm wearing. Let me see if I just back up more. Yeah, that's better. For the scarf I'm wearing, this is the Bandit Scarf Kit, and the kit comes with either a these are from my color collection with Mad Tosh, either a Spirit Fingers or a Snaps. And then you can choose any one of the colors of my colors of Unicorn Tails to be the accent color. So you can find that at yarnyay.com. Again, if you just go to the post to see this, I've linked to yarnyay.com. And then we also have Shawl Cuffs by All Red Leather Company. I've got this color and I've got the, um, a real nice, light, natural color as well. So you can find those as well. All right, that's all there is to it for now. Thank you for um, riding in on this weird Monday train with me. All right, um, if you wanna save this and reference this, just go to vickihell.com and bookmark the actual post page. It'll all be right there for you. All right, I will see you back here on the 13th. Well, the third to watch the unboxing, but for Ask Me Monday on the 13th. All right, thanks community. Be kind to each other, be safe, be healthy. Um, and let's just be good to each other. Okay, bye.